It's Friday, January 21st. Thank God it's Friday. We're an hour before the open. I got to keep this very, very quick. A lot of questions coming up about the market right now. Oh my gosh, what is happening here? Let's put up the major moving averages to see where they come into play. Put the 200 day up, 100 day, 50 day. Yes, the 200 day moving average is in play. You can see how close we are to it from the low yesterday. So I feel that we're going to test it. We need to see that big wash out what exactly am i going to be looking for here well i'd like to see long red candles stacked on the open pretty much like this i don't think that we're going to get it but after the selling pressure we saw yesterday very very possible we need to see these long red candles and then we need to see a climax like that a long bullish hammer so we probe, probe, probe for support, and then boom, buyers come in. This alone is not enough. Long green candle stacked. Long green candle stacked. Long green candle stacked. Long green candle stacked. Little to no overlap. Never look back. So this is not a herky-jerky little maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. It's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the opposite of this. Boom, 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 boom. When you get that, what results on the chart is a test of the 200-day moving average, a tail probably below it, and a bullish hammer. When we see that type of formation, asset managers will recognize that formation as aggressive buying and a likely capitulation low. Then you've got a chance to rally up to the 100-day moving average and find support at that level for a bit while the Fed discloses what the heck they're going to be doing. We've got the FOMC statement next Wednesday. We know they're going to be tightening. We know that some of the Fed officials are now looking for four rate hikes. Been discussing this over the past, gosh, couple months. I've also been mentioning to you that market conditions are changing. If you go back and look at my videos over the last three, four, five weeks, I've referenced how the sell-off in September was more prolonged and deeper than we've seen. We tested the 100-day moving average for the first time in a long time. And then I also referenced how in November and December, to typically very very bullish months of the year. We've got seasonality in play. So November comes along, everything looks great, and then whap, we're down to the 50-day, down to the 100-day. Eh, okay, just a little check. Here we go. We're right back up to the high, off to the races, right? No. Whap, another retest. No problem, back up to the high. We are testing these major support levels with greater frequency. If you go into a weekly chart and you take a look at the steady, steady price action, this is getting a lot choppier than anything else we've seen for a long time. There's one other thing that you should note. From this March low, you can see March 16th, 2020, the S&P 500 was all the way down to about 228. Folks, we're up 100% in less than two years. Do you think this type of momentum is going to continue to last in a rising interest rate environment when we have sluggish global growth? China is starting to show signs of strain. Their GDP was 4%. That's very low for them. Their retail sales were down. Omicron still wreaking havoc around the world. So the market is priced for perfection. We can expect to see two-sided trading. Am I bearish? Is the bottom going to fall out? Is this the big one? Should we be expecting a massive decline in here? No, this is nervous jitters ahead of Fed tightening. So I do believe that the market is going to find support. How can I be so confident? Well, if you look at the backdrop, interest rates are still at historic lows. Where are you going to put your money? You going to go into bonds? Bonds are guaranteed to lose money because yields are not keeping pace with inflation. That means you are generating negative real returns. 
corporations are still issuing cheap debt and they're using the proceeds from those bond sales to do what? To buy stocks. That's why we saw this last leg of the rally. 50% of institutional order flow was from corporate buybacks. We know that from Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, they reported it. They were buying back shares aggressively because of tax changes in the future. So that was their window, but they are aggressively buying back shares. They see share buybacks as one of the best investments that they can make. Well, what does that mean? That means that the bid to the market will remain strong because there are very few alternatives. Valuations are stretched. So there's reasons for the market to pull back. There's reasons for market to find support. There are reasons for the market to rally. Two sided price action, which brings me to another point. When you have a 100% rally in the course of the last two years in the market, this is going to attract new traders like you've never seen. Bye, 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 bye. The problem with this is that it breeds inefficiency and rallies like this mask a trader's true skills because I buy a stock and it moves against me. No problem, I'll just hang on to it. And then the stock rallies because the market's very forgiving. The market recovers, then it starts moving higher. Okay, great, I made money on that. You could also look at bullish put spreaders where they sell a bullish put spread here. Market looks great, great, great. Blam, they get hit. And now all of a sudden they have a choice. They can either close the trade down or they can buy back their shorter term spread and sell one farther out in time and farther out of the money. They call that rolling down and out. So market comes back, those puts expire, no problem. So the market rally masks a trader's true skills. And those who only see one side of the market, the buy side, are going to they're going to be in for a rude awakening because as the market starts to come in, they buy a dip because that's all they know how to do. And then the market has another leg lower. Uh, I'll average down. So they buy more and then the market goes down again. Ultimately, when you start getting into these longer term market moves lower, they've taken too much pain. They blow out. They lose their money. And yes, eventually you'll get a new crop of traders know how to short that is the message that i want to send to you because when you're able to see both sides of the market clearly that's how you'll be able to recognize the warning signs as i did right in here so am i expecting the market to have a lower low between now friday and the fomc meeting yes i am because Asset managers are going to look at this price action and how we blew through the 100-day moving average and closed firmly below it. They're going to be looking at this watershed event yesterday. So they are not going to be aggressively buying right now, even with earnings season coming up, which that's another tell. Hey, earnings season is supposed to be bullish for stocks. Yes, it typically is. And we got the mega cap tech stocks on deck. I think the mega cap tech companies are going to announce really decent earnings. Does that mean that they won't go down? They could go down because the valuations are a little bit stretched right now, but I don't believe they'll be hit by supply disruptions, Omicron, inflation, higher input costs, like many of the other companies will in the S&P 500. So the initial round of earnings, I think will be pretty decent. We come down, we have that long sell-off. And I mean, this has got to be one of those deals where you look at the screen intraday and you see the market selling off like this and you go, oh my God, it's never going to come back. And then eventually you hit that air pocket and you get the buyers coming in and they come in aggressively. Portfolio managers will be watching for that capitulation low and then the market will find support. I believe that's going to coincide with the FOMC statement next week. Yes, the Fed is going to start raising rates. They may disclose what their timeline is, but I believe that this is really, really nervous jitters ahead of that statement, and then I'm expecting prices to stabilize for a little bit. And 
expect two-sided price movement. Markets that you see in a strong bull rally like this don't go up and then down. This is an exception because there was a black swan event called COVID. Typically, what you'll see is you get into a range, and now you chop around in that range, and then if conditions deteriorate, then you'll see a breakdown below that lower end of that trading range, and the market will start to drift lower. Or you could just spend time, maybe a year or two even, and valuations start to catch up with the current price of the stock, and then eventually out of a trading range like that, you'll get a move higher. So expect two-sided trading. Look for opportunities on both sides. I'm expecting to see another leg lower by the market. Let's take a look at yesterday's price action. This is the other thing that you can tell from the chart. Long red candles. What does a long red candle actually mean when we look at it? It's important not to just see red and green on the chart, but to understand what they represent. In this particular case, if you look at the daily chart, you can see how that's the open, that's the close. The close is lower than the open. Well, that tells you that somewhere early in the day, you made a high for the day, and the market closed on its low. Here you can also see a red candle. In this case, you can see how we opened above the prior day's close. See how it's in the middle of this candle? But then what happened? Heavy selling throughout the course of the day. Not to worry. Yesterday, we opened above the prior day's close. Hey, here we go. This is the bounce we've been looking for, right? During the course of the day, we even had a bullish engulfing candle forming right in here. If you looked at this early in the day, like an hour after the open, you saw long red candle, long green candle, bullish engulfing pattern. Hey, that's awesome. This is the low we've been waiting for. We had that 100-day moving average tested again. Now we're off to the races, and then gradually prices started to deteriorate. So when you have a bearish trend, the market has a tendency to establish an early high and it closes on its low. And that's what yields those red candles. So yesterday, we had a nice rally. I actually felt pretty good yesterday. I thought, hey, this could be it. Okay, we've tested the 100-day moving average again. Now, the one thing that I should also note is that uh, overnight, we had a huge sell-off in the S&P and a rally all the way back and then the market gapped higher. I know that overnight session is gaining traction and that there is a lot more overnight activity than there ever used to be, but I don't trust those type of moves where you get an overnight sell-off and a rally back that would have led to a bullish hammer and then you get a gap up yesterday. These were nice candles in here. L took a little bit longer to get going in here, and that was a sign of resistance. Not particularly good, but this is okay too. When you get that lift off that I was mentioning, you are not going to see this for a very long time. It's going to be just boom, 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 relentless. No question about it. There's not going to be a bid check because you're going to have asset managers looking at that current price going, this is where I'm confident to buy. Buy them, buy them, buy them, buy them. Buy all you can get. And that's what yields those long green stack candles. None of this stacked like a skyscraper. Then you know that we have a capitulation low and that the short-term low is in and that you can start looking at selling out-of-the-money bullish put spreads. If you are in out-of-the-money bullish put spreads, I've been suggesting that you use that strategy because the market was coming down to test that major moving average again, earnings season should have lent more strength to the market than it did. So let's talk about that very quickly. So I've been discouraging you from selling any bullish put spreads in the tech sector. And that's why yesterday QQQ closed not only below the 100 day, but below the 200 day. And we've already seen on the S&P 500 how the SPY is way above that 200-day moving average right now. So 
QQQ is weak relative to the market. But the types of stocks that we were looking at were the energy stocks. Uh, some of the healthcare stocks were also good. Very, very selective tech. I showed you a couple semiconductor stocks, but I did ca caution you that they are tech companies. So pockets of strength within the tech sector. Let's take a look at AMAD. I believe it was down pretty significantly yesterday. But we also were waiting. This was our bullish put spread where we wanted to sell it right in here. The stock is down not because of its own earnings or its own forecast, but it was down because it's in the tech sector. Semiconductor companies have been making a lot of money and there's a lot of pent up demand for those chips. So as you get this check here on support, if you were going to be buying that spread back in, you could, and I've got videos that specifically talk about how to leg out of an option spread. If you've got a bullish put spread on, we close below that 100 day moving average. Well, this is a support level that we needed to preserve and we didn't. So the way to do that would be go, going into AMAT and you can see a red sell signal here. And that red sell signal, if you're legging out, this would be especially on the new low of day right in there. You got that confirmation and you have a new low of the day. So you know you're on a good sell signal. When you have a sell signal in the underlying stock and technical confirmation and you have a sell signal on the S&P 500 and technical confirmation also below the low of the day, also below the prior day's low, also below the 100 day moving average. When both of these are in agreement, you can buy back your short strike price and let your long put run. And then what I like to do if I'm legging out is I'll immediately set a target to sell the long put that I still own at the price that I purchased the short put back in. And I'd like to be out by the close of the day because I'm legging out. It has added position risk. If I can't close it out at that target price, I'll close it out at the end of the day. But you need to have, and here's the important point, First, you need to have that strong market tailwind that shows you that, yes, the market is going to be going down. Then you need to have technical confirmation from the stock. You need to see relative weakness in the stock, 1 OSI below zero, which you had right here. You got your sell signal, got your technical confirmation, buy back the short put, market confirmation, exit the long put. In this case, if you really held out because of how big the drop was yesterday, you would have you could have held out and actually made a lot of money on that spread as well. Legging out is very, very difficult. If you're not a seasoned trader, just close the spread down. Take your lumps. So we are closing below the 100-day moving average. I view that as bearish. I don't believe that buyers are going to come in aggressively until we have another test, perhaps, of that 200-day moving average. So AMAT was one exception or one example. I want to show you a couple of other stocks that I've also been suggesting, and these were your basic material stocks. You can see how they've held up really, really well. I think EOG might have been the last one that I suggested. This is the beauty of picking relative strength and using these stocks to sell your out-of-the-money bullish put spreads because this is what the market's doing. Look at that. This is what the stock is doing. By staying in the right stocks, you had this gigantic market drop. These stocks are going to be the first ones to go. Basic material stocks are going to benefit from inflation because they're able to raise prices. So that's why money is flowing into these stocks right now. So you've got a nice horizontal breakout right in here. That $95 level on XOG, beautiful. You're still not in trouble. If the market's spooking you in here, yes, you consider can consider closing down that spread in the same manner that I suggested. Let's take a look at the stock and see what it did. And there you can see stock opened lower, but look at that strength through the course of the day. Even when the market was in sell-off mode, the stock was moving higher than finally it caved in. Well, here you've got a sell signal as well. You're below the prior day's low. You can try and leg out right in here, but I wouldn't be too concerned given 
that huge underlying strength in the stock, given that this is late in the cycle of selling. There's your 200-day moving average. I like to see these lows form in the first two hours of trading. So what am I expecting today? I think the S&P futures are, uh, they might be down a little bit this morning. I'd have to do a quick check to see. Let me check just to get my market bearings. They might be down a little bit. And what I would be looking for is continued selling. Yes, S&P futures are down 24 points. I'd be looking for continued selling this morning. You're going to get a gap down. Look for those stacked red candles like this on the open. And look for this bar right in here off of the 200-day moving average about two hours into trading. We want to do it early in the day because then we'll have the rest of the day to stack those green candles. It could come very late in the day too. Just watch for this candle. Watch out for watch for that blow off selling right in here. And then watch for those stacked green candles. No pauses. Critical. No pauses. No dojis. You get a long green candle. You do not want to see a doji. You do not want to see a lot of retracement. You want to see five or six of these long green candles stacked without any reprieve, then you know that's a short-term low. Then you know you can take advantage of inflated option implied volatilities. You can go out, you can sell some out of the money, bullish put spreads. You can also do the same on the index if you like to trade index because you're going to be well rewarded because the option implied volatilities are going to be high. That's about all I've got time for right now. Really wanted to stress the importance of being able to see both sides of the market. You need to be able to trade from the long side and the short side. If you have only ever traded from the long side, you need to start learning the short side. Sell one share short. You don't have to go nuts with it. It's an uncomfortable feeling. And there is a different pattern to stocks that are going down. They behave much differently than stocks that are in rally rally mode because the price action on the way up is much more consistent. On the way down, stocks tend to fall very, very quickly and then they retrace, retrace, retrace. That's when you need a short. Then they fall again, take profits on those big drops, retrace, retrace, retrace. So if you're selling short into those long red bars, you're going to take some pain and some heat. You might even be shaken out. So you got to wait for the bounces to stall. Then you short, next leg lower, get a long red bar, take profits into those long red bars, wait for the bounce, repeat. So it is different. Make sure you're trying some shorts out. Get used to it because we are going to see two-sided price action, I believe, for much of the year this year. And you're going to need to know how to trade both sides. And it also helps you identify buying opportunities when you look at both sides. Because you'll start to see formations like warning signs like these that told me the market was going to roll over and go down. You will see on the downside as well. So you'll start to see multiple signs of support. And that will tell you that the market is ready to go back up. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I hope that most of you have heeded my warning that market conditions are changing. If you have been selling out of the money bullish put spreads, you're probably taking a little bit of heat on those. You can leg out if you're seasoned. If not, you may just want to close those spreads down. Wait for that low. Wait for that capitulation low. Then after that, you can come back in and sell some more out of the money bullish put spreads because the IVs you'll be able to get way out of the money, you'll be well rewarded at this level. And I believe there will be a little bit of a sigh of relief after the FOMC statement next Wednesday, and then it'll be all about earnings. Good luck with your trading. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers, and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy.
Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.